Hi, and um, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm very pleased to give uh, the, the uh, aspects of our clinical experience with uh, Avexis 101. Um, I won't be able to pronounce the, the full name of it. Um, and um, to share our small experience, of course, Israel is a much smaller country and proportionate to Poland, we have a much uh, um, smaller group of patients, uh, but uh, till now we uh, already have a, a quite a good experience with this uh, innovative treatment. So I'll, I'll just briefly go to the timeline uh, of the treatments in Israel. FDA approved Spinraza in the end of 2016. And the our first patient was given Spinraza just a month after this approval. And the Israeli baskets included Spinraza at the end of 2017. So currently, as Professor Fatal has said, uh, um, Spinraza is uh, approved for all uh, SMA patients uh, in all types. And uh, the uh, patients in our clinic are from adults to pediatrics. Uh, at uh, May 2019, Avexis was approved by the FDA and our first patient uh, started the treatment uh, immediately in, in November 2019 and this uh, treatment was included in the Israeli basket a month later. So up till now, we have already 21 patients in Israel that were given uh, this treatment. RISD or RISD plan was approved also uh, by the FDA and uh, it's unfortunately not approved yesterday by the Israeli basket, but we are still hoping that it will come to us as well. So as I said, 21 uh, SMA patients in Israel are treated. Uh, 10 of them are treated at our center. The age range is between 11 days. This is our youngest boy, who was a brother to a patient of, of ours that was treated uh, before him. And uh, it ranges between 11 days and 24 months of age. Currently, the follow-up time is uh, between one month after the injection to uh, 14 months. Eight of our patients are SMA type one and uh, two patients are SMA type two, which I'll uh, um, share more information about them. One patient, the, L, the youngest one, was pre-symptomatic at the treatment initiation. And as already said, four of our, our patients were non-naive. Three of them were previously treated with nusinersen, but nusinersen was discontinued prior to the gene therapy. And we don't have this um, um, opportunity to give two uh, medication because uh, these treatments are given by our national government. So it's too expensive to have these two uh, treatments together. One patient was given Resdiplum uh, by a, an expanded access way and he was moved to, spin, to uh, Zolgensma. Five patients were naive prior to the gene therapy, and um, there were two females and eight males. As I said, one pair of sieves. Two families were uh, consanguineous parents, and uh, in two patients, they had previously a uh, deceased sieve. We have all uh, ethnic origin in Israel. Some are Orthodox Jews, Muslim Arabs, Druze, um, and all, all of the ethnicities. And as said before, since 2013, we are uh, taking the, um, the gene, the gene um, uh, in the parents and um, two of our families has this cis configuration. The outcome general, all our patients are alive and well they are all showing an improved outcome after the gene therapy. Um, and the parents all are convinced that they, uh, they are doing quite well. Early treatment is a key for maximal benefit and improved outcome, as was said a lot 
a lot of times. The timing of inter the intervention and the disease duration before the intervention and the ability, the motor abilities are important factors to decide which are the, the uh, good candidates for the treatment. In our group from the respiratory uh, part, uh, none of our patients did not went off the non-invasive ventilation after needing it. But, uh, but uh, I cannot say, say just now if maybe a small part improved a little bit, but it's not quite clear. And uh, feeding, all are orally fed besides one who had also already had a peg before the, uh, the uh, Zolgensma was given. Our SMA type 2 patients are demonstrating also a significant import improvement as I've been said. So I'll go to the uh, type ones, and this is a busy slide. Um, um, in our uh, type ones patients, there were four non-naive, as I already described. Two of them started the treatment nearly when they were 24 months of age. And these are two children who were started with Spinraza uh, actually very early, as Professor Spatal said, before six months of age, of course. One was at one and a half months and one received Spinraza at two and a half months. And they were improving quite well. But even this one month of difference made the, a lot of difference between these two boys. The boy who was started earlier is currently able to walk a few steps independently or is using a walker. And he got the uh, Zolgensma at 24 months uh, because in Israel it's approved only under two uh, years. And the other one is just able to stand. Our third patient was switched from Nusi Nersen. Uh, is she started to get a, a spin rasa at six and a half months. Uh, and she was uh, doing quite well. So we decided to give her a chance. But looking backwards, I'm not sure that she was a very, very good candidate at the end. The fourth patient was a Rizdiplam boy. Got a Rizdiplam is a 1C type. And he got Rizdiplam from one year of age. He was quite good from the, the, in the uh, respiratory aspect and from the feeding aspect. And he got the uh, Zolgensma as he was um, at 20 months of age. And he's currently one month after the injection and he's doing quite well. Our, non, our other group of type 1s patients are naive patients. We have four naive patients. The younger one is 11 days of age. Uh, and as I said, he was diagnosed because we knew his brother was already a SMA1. The parents are very religious and they didn't want to end the pregnancy although they knew that the, pa the, the baby is going to, uh, to be with SMA. And actually it was a, quite um, a task to uh, take the antibodies as early as possible and to give him the injection early. And I understand that you have even younger patients who got a uh, Zolgensma. And he's currently nearly six months of age I would say that he was pre-symptomatic before getting the Zulgenzma. He's doing quite well, but actually he's not a healthy boy. I think he has a very, very mild motor delay, like a one month behind his age. Our uh, current AIDS patient, who was a naive, is uh, currently two months of age, and he um, he is, he was a quite difficult SMA patients who presented after birth. Actually, I would um, say he was a type 1A. Immediately after birth, he was diagnosed with hypotonia and weakness. And he got the injection at one month. Uh, there was a quite delay for diagnosing him, unfortunately. And uh, he's doing a quite, he's doing, he, had, he is our difficult patient and I will uh, say a few words about him afterwards. So just to give some example, this is the boy who got the Zolgensma at 24 months 
and started with Spinraza at one and a half months. And this is after he got the Zilgensma, he was able to stand. And here he started to do a few steps by himself and he is running in the corridor with a walker quite nicely. And here is his brother who is a, here is four months of age. He can raise the head quite nicely. He got the uh, Zolgensma injection at 11 days, as been said, but still he cannot straight the hands. And now he's currently six months and he does not roll, but he looks uh, very uh, good and breathe normally, eat normally. So um, he's doing quite well. The other group is the, two, the type two patient. We have two uh, type twos that were uh, diagnosed a bit late. Uh, one is a girl who is currently um, um, uh, nearly 28 months of age. She was missed by the uh, developmental, uh, patient, developmental doctors. And when we saw her and when she was a one, one year and a half, she was nearly not able to cruise because she was holding her legs. She was very weak in the legs uh, and she was sitting, but not able to stand at all. She got Zolgensma uh, at the age of 18 months. And currently, if you were going to see, she is climbing this uh, slide and she can do this more steeper slide better. She's not able to stand by herself yet, but she improved a lot. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and this boy was also a type two, was diagnosed quite late and was treated with Zolgensma. And he improved a lot after six months with this Hammersmith score. Excuse me, doctor, you have five minutes more. Okay, so the follow-up schedule, we are taking the tests as is recommended um, with, of the platelets, the AST, the ALT, the liver functions, the, um, the PT, PTT, and the troponin I a week, every week after, for the four weeks after the injection, and every two weeks on the two to third uh, month. And then if necessary, we'll continue to follow them. If the liver function is increased by two to three times the normal, the pertnisolone dose that was started at one milligram uh, per kilogram was increased in our group to two milligrams per kilogram, and we didn't know to we did not need to increase it more. Um, the highest elevation of liver enzymes it was in, seen in our older patients over 20 months of age, and it increased by 10 times. But after increasing the uh, steroid to two milligrams per kilo, uh, it deteriorated slowly and we can stop the steroids afterwards. Um, the steroid treatment um, was, was taken the longest time for seven months, but it's not the highest dose. It's generally all over the, the dose. The troponin, the transient increase in the cardiac troponin I was observed in three patients. Two of them without symptomatology, uh, normal heart rate, ECG, and echo, seen between one to two months after the gene transfer and then resolve. One patient who, as I mentioned, is making a lot of concern, uh, developed a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with interventricular thickening, and he is in evaluation. From the orthopedic aspects, four of our patients started to develop uh, scoliosis and kyphosis, followed uh, by our orthopedic team, and they were adjusted with corsets. And one patient with nearly three years of age is planned for a magic uh, operation, which is a, a very early age of this operation. What about other uh, complications, infections? The youngest patient, as I mentioned, who started the, the treatment at 11 days, developed UTI after circumcision. Fortunately, we didn't have any uh, patient who uh, was uh, with COVID, although many uh, parents and many families were <laughs> infected with COVID in Israel. No uh, serious steroid side effects were seen some behavioral mood swings, moon face and kushigui faces, but no hypertension, 
no edema, no uh, imbalance in the sugar, no fracture, no increased infection or skin bruising. Vaccinations are very important. We uh, insist of giving the uh, scheduled vaccination before the uh, steroid treatment, uh, particularly the uh, varicella vaccine and uh, the others. Uh, we don't have uh, increased hospitalization, but uh, we do insist that the surveillance and their uh, coming to the hospital to follow up uh, will be scheduled. We had some unexpected event in one of our boys who uh, started to roll over and unfortunately fell and broke his uh, skull, but didn't have any uh, uh, serious uh, bleeding. So this is a point to, to pay attention. What about the weight and the growth? Uh, we saw that around the injection of Zolgensma, many patients had dropped in their uh, weight and then uh, slowly, slowly went back to their cells, which was uh, also um, seen in other groups. It is important to emphasize after doing the expectations that uh, physiotherapy is extremely, extremely important. It's not just giving the IV injection, it's a lot, a lot of work afterwards. And we see that the patients are uh, able to maintain vertical, sitting, standing, but the movement from one uh, point to the other is very challenging. For them. And this is the, uh, a lot of work to be done. The progress is made by steps. It's not that it's all already, it's not that it happens all just in the first month. We can see it even later on. Um, and if I summarize the side effects we have in, in our group, the uh, elevated liver function was seen in six of our 10 uh, patients, decrease in the thrombocytes, which was observed in a lot of patients, was seen in three. Elevated troponin I was in three, one is, is uh, concerning, and some weight loss in others. So, thanks. <laughs>